you're carrying it, you're hauling it. It's a Wednesday afternoon in this high school reading class. You had a question, what's your question? But these teenagers aren't using their voices to tell the three little pigs. Rather, they're signing the story. Once upon a time. And the first student to volunteer, Reagan Sermon. ASL, yeah, so my native language, which I learned first before I was speaking English. The 18-year-old from Idaho Falls is one of 135 students who attend the Idaho School for the Deaf and the Blind. I love the school. I wish I came here my whole life. Reagan was born deaf, but his parents, Brooke and Jordan, didn't know their son couldn't hear them until one night. I can actually remember it perfectly. Reagan and, uh, and I were playing hide and go seek, and I was hiding behind the bed but yelling his name. And he didn't speak at that point. He was two years old. But I could vividly remember realizing he doesn't know where I am, and he doesn't know where the sound's coming from. Doctor visits and tests revealed Reagan had bilateral sensorineural hearing loss, likely caused from a virus Brooke contracted while pregnant. The young parents began learning sign language and enrolled Reagan in a preschool for deaf children. It was heartbreaking, but also encouraging that we could then do something about helping him. Reagan started wearing hearing aids, and they helped. He attended public school in Idaho Falls, and the district provided an interpreter for him, but over time, his hearing became worse. There he is. Yes, hearing aids now. When he was 11, doctors cleared him to get a cochlear implant, which was life-changing. The lead wraps around into his actual cochlear in his ear, and it's got this electronic lead, and then he wears a device on the outside of his head that then pulls in sound and transfers that down that lead. He said, it's like, it's a whole new world, because he didn't know, like, that your pencil made sound writing, or the dog's, like, you know, pause clicking. Reagan did well in elementary and middle school. He loved sports and had lots of friends, but during his freshman year of high school, he decided it was time for a change. Reagan is always very outgoing. People are very, very nice to him, but sometimes it's hard for him to fit into groups because he's so one on one. The Sermons had heard about the Idaho School for the Deaf and the Blind, but had never been there. So they took the three hour drive to Gooding to see what it was all about. So I came here toward it and First sight, I loved it. It was amazing and we felt like this is the right place. The state funded school is on 40 acres and has been here since 1910. Governor Frank Gooding donated his property after the original school for the deaf and the blind in Boise burned down. Students who have special needs are deaf, hard of hearing, blind or visually impaired attend the school. We have to have a student referred from their home school district and then we as a team, we decide together what's their least restrictive environment. We like to kind of promote ourselves as the Hogwarts of, uh, of Idaho because um, it really is a magical place. The blind and visually impaired students learn together, so do the deaf and hard of hearing. A separate program for developmentally delayed adults is also offered and there's special ed for younger kids. So we really provide individual instruction for each of these programs and each of these populations, you know, specific to each student. School is held Monday through Thursday and students come from all over the state. Some fly from Coeur d'Alene to Boise on Sunday nights and then join other kids on a bus to Gooding. Reagan and students in eastern Idaho take a shuttle and his parents admit there was some anxiety about sending their teenager away. The first couple weeks were really hard and I think hard for him too, but then after that he really just had only positive things to say and being with his peers, you know, that was enough. At the end of the school day, most kids don't go home. Rather, they stay here in these cottages. There's some for girls and some for boys and they're broken up by age group. Here, the kids socialize, eat dinner, sleep, do chores and get ready for their next day of classes. We have our cottage supervisor's office right when you come in which you'll see next. Reagan was happy to show us his cottage where the kids have roommates and are up at 6 a.m. every day. This is my room. We have a bed to sleep on. We bring our own sheets. The students have access to a gym, snack bar, and workout room after school. This is our social place where in the evenings after school we come here after we eat dinner, we come here and socialize. And Reagan is a proud member of the school's baseball and basketball teams. Playing with my deaf peers and being able to play basketball, the sport I love, one in a lifetime experience. Experiences that create memories and inspire, like this game when Reagan helped a blind teammate shoot a basket <laughs> and the crowd went wild. For me, helping other disabled kids achieve their goals, even though it's a small goal and not be very big. It's just very helpful to me.
Reagan says coming to this school has prepared him to go on a mission for his church and attend BYU-Idaho, things he plans to do when he graduates in a few months. This school is just, I feel like, very amazing compared to other schools because in other schools you don't see a bunch of deaf kids in a single group where they're working together, getting their goals. And if you're lucky enough to spend some time at the Idaho School for the Deaf and the Blind, you'll find kids just like Reagan, determined to make a difference in the world no matter what. It's a really magical place. It's a hidden gem. In Gooding, I'm Nate Eaton, eastidahonews.com.